Okay, hi, I am Terry from Be Natural. And Nathaniel from Be Happy. And today we are going back in the hive because we think there's something that might be a bit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so we got wood from a passerby that um, they saw a cloud of bees. And um, Terry went in there yesterday and she saw that there were queen cells, right? Queen cells. Yeah. So um, today we're going to find out what's going on and um, what we can do to at least make a bad situation better yeah. right. so here we go yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what we're going to do we're just going to make a basic check through the hive to find out what's going on So, <clears throat> from the first frame, I can already see that there is a lot of nectar in the brood area of the cell. So, um, that's never really a, a good thing. Because what it says is that the, um, the queen is kind of backed up. She doesn't have much space to lay. So that is a situation that can also cause swarming. Um, one of the reasons too is because we've had so much of a rush of pollen and nectar for the past couple of days that um, if you can see there, see they have a lot of nectar all in the brood nest that can cause the bees to swarm too. And it looks like it's swarm cells because they're quite a bit underneath the frames. What's the swarm cell difference? The difference between a swarm cell and an emergency cell is that usually the, the bees will just make a few cells on the surface mm. for as an emergency. Say the queen, you crush the queen or something happens. Um, they just make they take work, regular worker cells and they draw it out mm -hmm. so you will usually see it on the face of the comb but when it's a swarm cell they actually have those cups mm. hanging at the bottom of the cell and the queen usually lays in them and that's why you get them at the bottom of the cell mm. so as you could see from the first <clears throat> two frames most of our cells were on the bottom so that's kind of like a good indication that you know it must have possibly been a swarm that plus as we we can visually see that where well, we can notice that mm. there are a lot less bees mm -hmm. this time because that was the heaviest frame you have there mm -hmm. it was full last time yeah but that's still larvae in there yeah um it has the and that's what the queen does as well she lays a lot of larvae recruitment so mm. that when she lives with 70 percent of the foraging force mm. in a few weeks time um, you will have enough bees to take care of the hive so she plans it then yep what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well it, it's a it's a democracy kind of type thing um the bees collectively makes the decision wow look at a lot of stuff so on just yeah. on this frame mm. we have two three four five six seven now another good indication that it's a, it was a swarm is that you have queen cells at different stages see this one it still hasn't been capped mm. yeah Ooh. so if it was Ooh. if it was an emergency cell if it was emergency most of them would have been the say at this around the same age ah. But it's still strange that such a small hive swarmed and um, it doesn't usually happen for you to have a nook that swarm. One reason, well, there are a few reasons why I think a nook would swarm. Mm. One is because the queen that was in the nook was one that was more than a year old. Mm. So she already have that urge to reproduce. So that could cause the bees to swarm now number two the resources came in so quickly mm. because 
we've been getting a lot of greenery and yes. flowers and you can see, see the coming difference in. <laughs> yeah. so the resources started coming in so quickly that mm -hmm. the bees didn't have a time to react to draw out more comb so that she can have laying space mm -hmm. and because of that um the nest got backed up she felt like okay well there's no more that i can grow here let's take some of the workforce and let's leave mm. so that's the two reasons i feel that this hive would swarm but it definitely looks like a situation um where the queen swarmed mm. first i would say because of the number of cells and the positions of the cells mm -hmm. you can tell that this was more of a swarm situation than a super seizure or a emergency um, queen replacement Okay. So what we're going to do, we have quite a lot of brood in there and we still have a good number of bees. So um, the plan is to break that hive down into two smaller hives mm -hmm. and we'll put two frames of brood in each of our um, nook boxes and um, we'll allow each of the nooks to make their own queen reason why is because 80 percent of the you have an 80 percent chance of your queen your hive getting requeened mm -hmm. so if you leave it up to chance you'll have just that one 80 percent chance but if you put queen cells in two separate hives you have two opportunities so if one doesn't return by any chance then you can always merge the hive back because you will have that extra queen that also made it mm -hmm. and given the amount of cells it would be a shame to just allow mm -hmm. one to come out so you you can um in that case i would just make two splits mm -hmm. you know sometimes if my high swarm i take like a frame and i make like four or five hives okay just a frame of with a queen cell on each one wow okay but in that case um the bees they are not very strong per se so we're just going to make two splits. Um, I have the boxes. We'll go, we'll get them. We'll split them down. We'll take off this box and we'll put a nook box in the um, place. And then um, we will make another split and bring it in another location. Okay. Good? All right. Yep. Okay, so part two of our recording. So we got our boxes. And um, we're going to allow Terry to make her first split. Right. You can um, come across to that side. So you could just take frames and put it in. Okay. So what we're going to do um, when making the split is we're going to take the frame with the most bees and that one goes in the other location uh, along with a frame with a queen with the queen cells on okay. so and we're not going to smoke them much so that the bees stay on the the frame so she's going to be very careful because the weather is not that great <laughs> so she's just going to take her time so this one how it looks on your side yeah that one, yeah, that one has quite a bit of um cap brood mm -hmm. so that is a very good um frame to bring away from the the colony for on the next day it is a new home. no one of the reasons why we are putting them back into small boxes is so that they have a smaller space they can protect and manage because we don't want stuff like um, wax moth and um, ants and things to be able to bother them mm -hmm. and they cannot um, regulate the temperature of such a big box. Okay. So I'm going to move the, one of no, the empty your friends taking, or this one? Hold, give it a little smoke. See how they kind of looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Alright. Yeah. So as long as the bees they are looking from the frame up mm. that's kind of like a defensive mode oh, so when okay. you see that you can always give them a little smoke mm -hmm. just to correct them yeah. 
He's one of the fullest friends. Mm -hmm. So that one can go for the, the speed that we're taking away. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's the heaviest one. Yeah, so uh -huh. that has enough resources because the, um, the split that we're taking away, it's not going to have a lot of foragers mm. because we're making the split in the same yard. So this means that a lot of those bees are going to fly back home. Oh. So we have to give it um, quite a... a we have to get quite a bit of bees initially. Okay. Yeah, push that one. Yeah, where yeah, are we putting the bees? Yeah, close it. Close it this way. Yeah. Touch the frames, and then you put two empty ones on either side. Maybe one don't want to fit here. These ones don't oh, want hold to on, hold on, hold on. So I just push them. I think we might have to flip it. Flip it? Uh, okay. Flip. Thanks. So <clears throat> that's all part of beekeeping. Um, these things happen. You could treat the bees as best as you want at the end of the day they will do what they want to do <laughs> and you that is your job as the beekeeper to realize when you have a problem anytime you enter in a hive and you see queen cells know that there is a problem something is not right and you have to ask yourself what's going on yeah so you just put that one in yeah So a queen cell usually means something is up, um, if there's a situation that needs to be corrected, which is what we're doing today. So Terry did say she wanted to make a split by the summer. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got it in a different way than I thought, but yeah, so it goes. Would have rather do it in a more controlled manner, but you know, it happens. So this one, you could just rest the cover on it still. So that's split number one. Okay. Right? Now we're going to take this one mm -hmm. and we're going to put the rest of the bees in there. And that box, and that box is going to go back on the, the stand where those. Can I put this one first? Yeah, you can. It have queen cells on there. Not on the other side? Mm. I think it has some on that one. Okay. Yeah, mm, it smells nice. Mm. Oh, I can see. Yeah. Oh, nice. Nice shiny queen cell there and we have three, three of them there. As you can see again from the bottom, that's where they, um, they set the swarm cells. Mm -hmm. So now, how soon will those queens hatch out? Um, a queen cell takes 16 days from egg to, egg to um, emerge and um, it, they usually cap them off after day 10. Mm -hmm. So I guess we have another five days before, at least another five days before these um, emerge. Mm -hmm. And then they will take two weeks, up to two weeks to get mated depending on the weather. Mm -hmm. And um, you, so you should see um, queens, um, you should see eggs and brood and stuff after that period of time okay. and it's the first the first queen out that wins right yeah um, <laughs> usually the um the first queen out kills all the rest of the sisters or the um bees help in doing so as well okay yeah. so what we do is we take off that box from that stand
happening? Yeah, and we put this box as a replacement. Yeah, the entrance is on my end, on that yeah. end, yeah. So, yep. And the hole is for what? The hole is for, I usually give my nucleus size holes. That's to put like a bottle to feed them when they're in their growing stages. But so as of now, and we're not going to use it, we're just going to put a, a cap on there, okay. um, which we'll get to do later. And um, you had another area set up for the next one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that just has, that blocks up the entrance. So they just have a little entrance to yeah. come in, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So they will, as you can see, there are a lot of bees in the air now. Mm. They will orient and they will find that entrance and they will get in there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So you notice that they're starting to, they'll start to find the entrance. They'll keep okay. orienting until they find it. Yep, so we're going to do the next one. The space is not set up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> not to sleep on any mango. <laughs> no, I know, right? Bees in the air. <laughs> okay, um, maybe we have yeah, to so put down the, yeah. reorganize those blocks. Yeah. So as grass. you know, it's not something that we were expecting, so we can all be to, um, unprepared. All right, so let me see. Those ones are facing the other way? You can face it anyway. Um, Yeah, you, you can you pull out the grass? Out, yes. Alright, so now just um put the blocks a bit closer. Stop. Yep, and put the, the nook on there. And the entrance is that way? Yeah, entrance you can face it the seaside. There you go, you can have a sunset view, please. No? Okay. You want me to help you? Yes, okay. Is it okay? Uh, it feels like it has a little rough too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you might want to yeah. um, lift up the, the nook a bit. Mm -hmm. Is it rough here? I'll fix it. Okay. Alright. Yep, so that's basically making a split and turning a not too ideal situation into a positive one so if all goes well by the end of this we'll end up having two nucleus hives with two newly mated queen and we're just about to enter in the flow so hopefully she will get mated and she will be able to build up to at least full out each of those nucleus hives by the end of the summer do yeah. your best. <laughs> yeah. Because January and February are really hard on bees, mm. Yep. Mm. even in the Caribbean. Okay, so for this, um, a way to <clears throat> you can either knock off the bees from the old box, or you could just give them a bit of smoke, and they will fly away. Smoke is So the, the bees that are in there, they will fly out and they will go back to where they know, which is at the front of this side. As you can see, they're already congregating at the front there. Those are the bees that is living in this box. Come on. Come on. Last one out. Last one out. <laughs> go on. <laughs> okay, all done. Yeah. Let's see. Cool. So, yeah, so we'll put that back in storage mm -hmm. and um, hopefully by the end of the summer we can at least put one of the two back in there. Usually that, that the one that stays in the original place 
-hmm. usually um, get stronger faster than the other one because it it gets just um let's go slow because it gets back all the forages so i hope um, you guys were able to learn something because we are happy to do the videos and teach as best as we can okay you want to say any last words thank you for helping me <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, stay safe yes and, and thanks for joining us on our beekeeping journey. Yeah.